Hello YouTube. A um, little time for a catch up video and we're just going to cover a whole bunch of stuff today because well I've been really lax. <laughs> I've been, actually I, I haven't been. I've been doing you know, a lot of real world work but I thought today we would cover a whole bunch of subjects. Um, in depth we're going to go over my uh, my little miniature Kylie collection here. I don't have a lot but I, I really like the ones I have and I thought we'd give a long-term test report on some of the ones that I've had a while and show you some of the new stuff and things that are going to be tested and, and kind of give you an idea of what's going on with that. And uh, we're going to cover some stuff that people have sent me. Surprise, surprise. And um, also we have some big news about the Blade Show. And I'm very excited about this and I can't wait to tell everyone. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some of this stuff. And I think the first thing that we'll do is we're going to cover the Blade Show news because that'll take the least amount of time because I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Um, a while back I had some thoughts you know, we were, there were several people that I had said, well, you know, if you're coming to the Blade Show, you ought to just stay here because I've got room. And um, so I asked some people, and, and some people have said yes. There's a, um, one that I still need to hear from that I hope will make it. But I got to thinking, these people are all either knife makers or you know they're certainly knife aficionados um, people that can sharpen they all have some skill for sure and um, so I thought what if we have a, a build along a, a um, blade show charity build along so I talked to a few folks and they, they like the idea and so here's kind of the, the overview as it stands now. This is subject to change. Um, Sugar Creek Forge, Tim Troyer, uh, Mike Gavko uh, are slated to come at this point for sure. And um, John Davis had indicated that he would like to come by if, uh, if they can. And what we're going to do is on Saturday night, I'm sure that Tim and Gavko and I will work on them more than that, but Saturday night I'm going to have a chili supper here for whoever can come, whoever's at the night show of my YouTube friends. Um, if you think that you're going to be at the show and you might like to come on Saturday night, uh, just send me a private message and you know we'll we'll make sure that you get the information that you need to get here. Uh, I'm going to make regular chili. I'm going to make some vegetarian for for people that don't eat meat. So we'll, we should have all the bases covered. I think we'll have a good time. And um, whatever knives that we can build, we're going to, I think for simplicity, and this was um, a suggestion of, of Kylie Harris and I think it's a, it's a great suggestion I think that I'll probably auction them on eBay and 100 percent of the proceeds less eBay fees will go to charity and um, I have yet to finalize the charity but it, it's certainly going to be something that everyone would easily get behind it's you know it's not going to be anything off the wall um, you know breast cancer research uh, here in Atlanta for instance we have Scottish Rite Children's Hospital it just does amazing work with with kids and they don't turn people away you know you you go there and, and, and they're gonna they're gonna do everything in their power to make your child better so there's just an endless list of worthy causes and I think it will be just a blast to have folks here oh, they'll be down in my shop um, you know we'll be cutting and sanding and gluing and just making as much of a mess as we can and hopefully my uh, 
my wonderful wife can capture some of it on video for us and um, we'll videotape the bill for you and then once everything's finalized about a week later I'll put this stuff up on eBay and uh, give everybody links to it and you guys can bid on it if, if you think it's worth bidding on um, I have some knives of my own that I'm going to throw in the mix and I'm going to put those up too um, I may have some things that I will just have a set price on that I will offer to my subscribers to the people that watch my videos um, they'll be good prices and a couple of them are going to be something you you know you may want to jump on so I'll keep you posted on that and I hope that um, we can just have a lot of fun so um, again this is in the early stages I'm, I'm going to talk to Tim a little more on it but that's pretty much where I'm at with it so far and uh, I'm, I'm excited to meet him in person and Gavco and and John and anybody else that can make it um, there are other people from across the pond that are going to do what they can uh, they may donate steel material knife blanks you know they just we, we don't know at this point and um, so we'll we'll see where that takes us but I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I always look forward to the blade show but this year I'm, I'm really looking forward to it um, the next bit of news I got is I received some some gifts some people came to my house um, and some of them from across the sea some of them from the other coast of the United States and uh, I'd like to start out with two knives and I'll just hold these up for the camera here and I'm doing some work for uh, for Roman Legionnaire and um, rather than than do money for his uh, a while back he did a video on this knife it's um, a Martin knife and I just thought it was cool and um, I said you know instead of paying me why don't we trade for the Martin knife and he was agreeable to do that so it is it has come to live with me and it's just a nice little neck knife I think it's uh, it's really cool it's um, convex convex ground and um, this particular one's ATS 34 and the handle looks like either G10 or micarta I'm gonna go with G10 I think and um, I'm sure Eugene can can let us know he could in down in the um, the uh, responses he can probably tell us exactly what this is but it looks like G10 I'll I'll say that and um, it just it feels good in the hand. I think it would be just a wonderful utility knife. Mary may steal this one for me. I don't know, but that's fine too. And then uh, <coughs> he also sent this one. And uh, I love Scandinavian knives, and I think he knew that. And um, this one is a little. He said it's a a little semi-production, semi-custom. There's some handwork and some machine work on it. And um, let's see who made this guy. It is. Uh, it was made. It, it was made actually made for a company I think, and it says um, Metzko Minerals on it. So, and on this side, this side we actually have a. A, a logo a stamp but it, it doesn't have a name so maybe he can add who actually made this but it's got a nice hand filling handle and uh, it's you know very sharp I did a little convex on the flat ground and it's um, it's just a cool little knife I really like it so um, I'm enjoying these I sent he sent me ten knives I sent the first five back and he should have picked them up today so I'm hoping that he'll do a little video or at least I I hope I, I'm hoping he'll do one because maybe he won't like them I don't know but I'm hoping they'll be okay uh, the other thing I got is Mr. Watson and this was a total surprise to me I had no idea whatsoever that this was coming and Stony Brook Bushcraft hand carved this 
and he said he usually puts them on canes and things like that and um, I have a really nice walking staff that I use a lot when we're in the woods and uh, Watson is going to go on on top of that staff and as soon as I saw him he's got um, you know the handlebar mustache and the mutton chops and he just uh, he just looks like a right proper Victorian gentleman so um, I immediately named him Watson and I, I just I think it's really cool I told uh, told him that if I tried to carve something like this it would probably look like a gargoyle by the time I was done so um, thank you very much for this and I'm, I really like it um, I wanted to update you on my Kylie collection here as of now there's been some additions and um, we'll talk about some of the long term ones that I've had and, and how they're working out and some of the new ones that I'll be testing and, and just some for me as a collector of his knives some, some that I think are really cool and uh, I got two of his steels a small one that I carry in my bug out bag and um, you know this uh, I say bug out bag it's actually my, my backpack that I carry every day to work and it is handy as it can be and I also have the large one and let me get it out of the, the little tube here this one pretty much stays at the house but um, these are nitride coated um, you've seen other people use these and I, all I have to say is I second what everybody else says about them and they work great um, I found a very very light touch because you have such a small surface area um, and they're so hard that it just takes just no touch at all you just basically draw that across there a little bit and uh, a knife that's already sharp and maybe the edge is rolled or it's just just a hair doll it'll, it'll just bring it back uh, in no time so my report on these is if, if, you, if he's got some and you can get them get them because they are they're just great tools um, let's start with some of the older things and we'll do a, a, a quick update um, this is one I got more for collecting than anything it's a uh, CKC pen knife and has a titanium handle on it and this is kind of my as we say here in the south my Sunday go to meeting knife and uh, I use it for for carving steaks if we go to a restaurant or something like that and just try to keep it nice and not mess it up a whole lot and it cuts great that I have let's see this one that one there's three of these pen knives and they're just just amazing I, I will definitely get some more of these these things are probably some of the best neck knives that you could ever want and I carry a lot of neck knives I really like them and um, this is the little ABEL um, or AEBL that you guys saw in the cardboard cutting test. It's it's real thin, and this knife just just slices like crazy. It's um, really hand filling. I kind of left it the handle squarish. I'm giving my camera person fits here. I'm sorry, and. Um, it's it's just really comfortable it, it just fits my hand perfect because I made it for my hand and uh, that's one advantage to if you can do your own handles that's a great advantage to it because you can custom fit them for your hands this handle on this one this is my everyday summer carry um, here in the south in the summertime the humidity is just ridiculous and the wood handles suffer so they're my preference but I carry them pretty much exclusively in the winter time and in the summer I'll carry my Carta G10 uh, this happens to be uh, paper ivory my Carta and this handle looks a little odd but again I made it just to fit my hand and it's super comfortable it's um, just just a great knife and I use it daily 
at work. It cuts cardboard, it cuts tape, it cuts anything that needs cutting. Um, you know, opens breakfast packets in the morning, whatever it's got to do, it um, it does it all, and it, it really does a great job. In the winter time, this is my other main carry, and this is the uh, Streamline. You guys have seen this in other videos with uh, blue liners, fiddleback uh, walnut handles, and it's probably the most comfortable knife I've ever held, and uh, the design is perfect. The, the blade design, the way it's made, um, the grinding on this one, the, 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 the thickness combined with the uh, way Kylie convex this one is, is just, it's superb. And I really want another one of these with my carter handle so I can just carry them year round. Um, it, it's just, it's a perfect size for a neck knife. It's not too big, it's not too small. Um, I have a couple of folders and one is extremely special to well they're both special to me. Um, this particular one is one with just my Carter scales and unlike the standard from the first batch that he made this has the very short tang and I carry this, I started to carry this for like a week. I have, um, I think I've told you, I carry the little Brisa folders. And um, I started to carry this for a week and I've just never taken it out of my pocket. Now, I, I carry a lot back of my neck knife as a backup and for really hard cutting I'll break one of those out. But you know what, for 90% of what I do, this knife comes out, it's open with one hand, it's perfectly secure, even if it tries to close, of course I've, I've got this finger up here and this one down here, so it, it really can't close, but even if I move this finger back here and it closed, it just closes into this little notch, it doesn't hurt at all, I'm putting a tremendous amount of pressure on there, and it just, it's fine. But it, it never offers to do that. I just hold it like that. I cut what I'm going to cut. One hand. It's closed up and back in the pocket. And I love it. This one is even more special to me. This guy, I've got, um, when I, after I got it, it didn't have this drilled out. But I went ahead and did this. And um, this has a locking pin in it now. So this is, this is a fixed blade knife. This is one piece. You can't move it. And uh, of course you pull that pin out and you've got a folding knife again. And if that pin were out of there and you could see the tang, you would see that it is number zero. So I'm extremely tickled to get that. And this one's probably not going to get used. The other one is, is my everyday user, but this one's going to be used lightly and lovingly. I, I'm sure Kylie would prefer that I, I just thrash on it and see what it'll do, but I know what it'll do because I, I, can, I can do it with the other one. And um, so this guy's really nice. Um, Mary, would you hand me the, I believe it's the blue sheath. I hope this is the right one. Uh, yeah, I um, when I bolted the handle up, I actually made a um, a neck sheath handle for it. Now this thing, all told, is 6.5 ounces, and you might think that well, that's just too heavy for a neck knife. But I I've worn it, and um, let me undo this button here, and. Um, it, it just, you really can't feel it. It's not that heavy. And, and you know, it really works well. So, um, I do, do carry that just for grins from time to time. And, um, both of these cut, the geometry on both of them is great. So, those were new acquisitions. I also got a Kiridashi, and this is also number zero. And it has number zero there. It has his stamp there and his stamp there. It's stamped in three places. So that's kind of different. 
and uh, it took me a while to get that booger down. It wasn't sharp when I got it, but it um, it's real sharp now and it works great. So that's fun. I got this is if and Kylie correct me in the notes if this is not right, but I believe this blade was from the very first run of the original folders that he was going to make and then he he changed his design and decided he wasn't going to make it quite like this so I've got this he sent me a set of handle scales and the pins and basically everything I need to, to grind this out and and make one of those and um, I'll uh, that's probably what will happen to it. I've, uh, there's some other things I've been thinking about doing with it, so I just haven't made up my mind. But that should be a lot of fun to play with. Um, you've seen this one just recently. This is the uh, Forrester, t Forrester B, and you just saw it in our farm video. And uh, haven't sharpened it at all. I guarantee you it'll shave. And it's, it's just like it came back to the house. And even these big knives on this small hone, I found that, you know, you don't stroke it this way, just very lightly. If you just draw the edge along there like that, and then, and then of course you have the, the big hone if you want to use it, and just draw it along, just barely the weight of the blade. Just no problem, and um, it, it it really holds that edge for a good long time. Um, that's 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 a hard use knife, and it and it, it gets used a lot. Um, along those lines, we have this, and this is the uh, the CKC hatchet, and you've seen one like this in Cliff Stamps videos except he has the longer hatchet I, I mean excuse me the longer handle I opted for the shorter handle because I eventually want to integrate this into my woods backpack and it's um, it, it's really well balanced I blued all of this area up through here and um, it, it came out pretty nice. This light is, we're doing this in the evening, so the light's not optimal. I don't know what you guys are seeing yet. Um, I took hollow pin stock and I put four pins in it. And these were the, the stock handle slabs that Kylie was kind enough to send with it. They were already cut out, so I didn't have to do much there. And... Um, Ah, this you talk about penetration and and being sharp. That's that's a hatchet, folks. An axe. It'll shave. One of the reasons it's so sharp is is another innovation that he came up with. He, Kylie sent me an email the other night, and he said, um, "I got something I want you to try." And I said, all right, what, what you got? And he told me that uh, he had taken sandpaper and he had put in white compound on it, just rubbed, you know, just filled it in and then sprayed it with WD-40. And what that does, that dissolves the wax and the grease that hold the compound in suspension and it forms a slurry. And then along with that, you like if you have your sandpaper here and you've got your slurry on top of it with the WD-40, he told me to take just, I'd, I'd talked to him about my father not long ago and said that he sharpened all his knives on a, a, a one of the pucks that you sharpen axes with. He would just hold it in his hand and then do this. And he could get a knife just ridiculously sharp. It never worked for me, but he could do it. Well, he said, do those little small strokes because I told him I was experimenting with that and like that and they just they come out ripping sharp I only took this knife and these other ones 
down to 600 grit and then I go from there about four or five strops on a, a charged hone that's all they get and this is a seven mil knife folks look at look at the back of this thing this is a thick 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 knife a lot of meat there and you can see it's a nice ground grind on it and I love this sheep's foot the way he ground this this is probably the most perfect bushcraft knife I've ever had in my hands and that's a seven mil knife I can turn that I can do the S cuts or any other kind of cuts you want to do seven mil thick let's take um, a phone book and Mary would you hand me that cutting board so I don't get killed for getting the mark in this table here and we're going we're gonna to set this here and um, I think I'll try to do it from the side so that you can see it um, here is another knife that's razor sharp this is a um, Spider Co. It's a um, oh, good grief. Who made this one? Let me look and see. I think it's it's got the designer's name on it. It was made as a hard use knife, and it's um, yeah, Gail Bradley, and it's uh, CPM M4. And what I'm going to do it's it's hollow ground. Like I say, it's razor sharp. I'm going to push cut into the side here as hard as I can. I've never tried this knife. I, I purposely took one that I'd never tried. Um, and we'll just see how far it's going to penetrate into this into this phone book here. hard as I could push and it's penetrated about halfway through that phone book if you can see that now let's take this knife with a 7 mil back on it and remember we're tapering from here up to 7 mil and let's let's see how far it'll go through this phone book And there we are right down to almost the last page. I was afraid I was going to hit the cutting board. I could have went all the way. and I, I mean the table. So there's the difference in those two cuts. There and all the way down to there. And a lot of that as Kylie has said on some of his videos and I have said on mine and I'll say it again it's all the geometry right here at the very edge the back part has to be ground properly you have to have a, a good convex I think and um, but all the cutting action happens right down here this last millimeter um, this particular one by the way this is his 2.4 and it's made out of a steel called Calmax which the axe is also made from and I am really liking this stuff it is I was going to mirror polish this and the, the the axe just for grins and when I started sanding on that axe I just gave up any idea doing this L Max may be on paper tougher than this stuff, but boy, let me tell you what, this is some tough steel. It will hold an edge for a while, and it's just, just phenomenally sharp. I can't get over the way this thing cuts. Um, I've got some pine here, but this is not the soft pine like you've seen on my other videos. This is, um, is much harder stuff, and so let's find our Gail Bradley 
which and this is a good tool I mean this this is a nice knife let's see what we can get and again I go as hard as I can go and we're in about yay far and now let's try Mr. Calmax and I'm going to go back far enough so that the chip can't move so I, I get no advantage from that that cut there um, <laughs> what can I tell you and I'm going to go way back because it, it, it looks like it popped it out anyway because it went so deep let's go down here there's nothing in front of it so uh, this thing is just going to be a phenomenal I don't know if you can see those curls are popping off so far. I don't know if you can see them. But uh, this is some tough, tough stuff to cut. And it, it's just hogging right through it. I uh, really like this guy. Um, the 5-inch kitchen knife is... Um, just really great. This is not the best slicer you're ever going to find. Uh, it's a little thicker and a little more heavy duty. It's not a flexible. You're not going to bend or move this knife. But I think this thing would be just a fantastic... And in fact, I'm going to make a Kydex sheath for this. I think this thing would just be phenomenal to use in the woods uh, for a camp knife. I mean, it'll slice a tomato just fine but thinner blades will, will cut it better but the geometry on it is going to stay sharp an awfully long time it's super comfortable and uh, I, I just think it's going to work great this one is one of the best slicers I've ever tried this is his 5 inch boning knife uh, wait a minute 6 yeah I would say yeah it's probably about 6 or maybe a little longer um, this is a this is a kitchen machine right here um, just works extremely well super comfortable and probably one of my favorite kitchen knives to date um, love it for you know slicing just processing anything I don't care what it is this guy will, will get the job done um, this is one it's one of his fighting knives and uh, I acquired this from uh, from Mines Mare, and I really like it. It's you know it's purpose built knife, so this is is not the world's um, super slicing tool or whatever. But you can see I gave this one that 600 grit edge, and if you look at that paper, you know we can easily. And there again, I'd say that looks that looks like it's seven mil also, and um, it'll just eat that stuff up. Um, I think for the last one we'll cover. I think we've pretty much hit on most of them. Um, I have just begun on doing the polish out on this guy. This one will receive a full mirror polish and this is what I've got done on it so far and I've got a lot of time in it. It's brick hard. Um, this of course is the Persian and this is number one. So I'm, I'm pretty um, privileged I think to own this one. I'm pretty happy that I've got it. Uh, you're not going to see me beating through the woods with it like you do uh, Gavco. Sorry, sorry. Um, I know it'll take it, but um, with the hours I'm going to have in this thing when it's totally done, uh -uh. sorry Gav, sorry Kylie, ain't going to happen, buddies. Um, that one's going to be, be taken care of. Um, one other one that I got. Uh, one of our YouTube friends I had the privilege of meeting and that was McCullen J. He was in town on business and came by. We were talking nice and um, so 
in the course of talking, you know, I, of course we talked about what he had. And what he had was this. And it's the um, Spyderco Fred Perrin PPT. And it's um, S30V. And this little guy, as soon as I held his, um, I, I knew I wanted one. It, it's just super comfortable. I took the clip off. I, I don't use pocket clips hardly ever at all. I just don't like them. They're, they just, if you use a knife a lot, they'll just eat your hands up. And um, I took the pocket clip off. I put a convex edge on this too. And it's, you know, it's just all right down here, but it's a very shallow convex for me anyway. And um, just, just super sharp. No, uh, no issues with it. It's my backup folder for when I don't feel comfortable using this. But like I say, 90% of the time, it's this guy. If I absolutely positively need to not lock back, there's nothing this one won't do. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything. I hope to do a couple more videos this weekend um, down in the shop. Maybe uh, I've got some stuff. We're going to take um, for sure Mr. Axe and the um, Mr. 2.4. This is my new bushcraft set, and we're going to be taking those in the backyard and putting them through their paces. Um, I think this is the best bushcraft knife you could ever get your hands on. And for you knife makers out there, um, this blade shape for working in the woods and working with wood this this really nice drop and then this slight curve you know it, it almost is reminiscent of I, I call it a, a, a sheep's foot Warncliffe hybrid and it just absolutely cuts like crazy I am really super impressed with it um, I put mosaic pins this is um, curly maple is that right? Yeah, I think it's curly maple I put on there. And um, I just couldn't be happier with it. Uh, hand, You know, it's hand filling. Again, I made it to fit my own hands. So if um, if I don't like it, I got nobody to blame but me. And uh, I actually took it in the shop, redid it one time. I had it a little bit too thick. And um, it's just, just perfect now for me. And uh, so... I'm just really happy with it. And that's my little little Kylie collection for now. Um, I've got some stuff in the works with him. And, um, you know, some things could be coming along. They're not, it's not going to be soon, but there's maybe some surprises coming. You don't know. Um, I'm, I'm following my mantra of old age and treachery will always overcome youth and skill. So, we'll see. I'm going to have a few things. Oh, here's one we didn't hit on. This is um, also one I got from Larkin. This was an interesting knife. This was one of the first ones that, and in fact, it may be the first Kylie knife I, I got, period. And it was in rough shape when I got it. And I would not, I would stake my life on this knife. And the reason I would, and the reason it was in rough shape, the back was beat all to hell. Kylie had taken a hammer and pounded this through stuff. I mean, it was a test bed. It was a test knife. It's been reground a couple times. And um, I thought it deserved some TLC since it survived all that. So it got a mirror polish. The handles were redone and smoothed out. And um, it's just a, just a sweet knife. One of my favorites. And... Um, I would I would just easily switch from the 2.4, you know, back to this guy anytime. And it's uh, just a superb cutting tool also. So that's it, my friends. I'm sorry it took me so long to get a video out. And I know this was kind of long, and I, I hope you'll bear with me. But we'll try to get some more out with the test with the axe. And um, just see what we can come up with. And um, it was fun to make a mess for you again. We've got wood shavings and paper cut and 
all kinds of stuff and um, I will use this this one some the number zero and I'll, I'll try to bring you guys along when I do this one's going to see a lot of use this is going to continue to be my front pocket folder um, because of this very short tang it shows no propensity whatsoever to open in my pocket so I have you know especially at first I was very tentative very careful about carrying it without a pouch but I thought I just can't see that you know putting the kind of leverage it needs to flip it open and it doesn't it, it's never even come close to it so um, you know I'm still careful but I, I have no qualms about carrying it like this without a, a sleeve on it this one it just is like all the other ones it has a much longer tang so if this ever goes um, with me it'll, it, it'll either go in a pouch uh, kydex sheath or something to keep it closed because that's a lot of leverage there and um, that one absolutely I'm afraid could come open in my pocket as can any liner lock that's just the way they are so you guys take it easy have a great night I'm gonna go try and download all this stuff and get this on the web for you and I hope you have a great time and I'll keep you updated on the charity build for the blade show as it comes along and we'll talk to you later